All right. My next guest up tonight, he's known as the, the king of freestyle. He's been on the show before. Let's give him a late night welcome for George Lamond. <laughs> My man, how, how you, you doing? doing? It wouldn't be right if you don't say my name wrong. Oh. I love the way he says it, Lamont. Yeah, I was going to say that. I apologize. If but that's time... the way you say it in Staten Island. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's Lamont, but it's Lamont. Sounds right. <laughs> I had a good friend named Lamont, so I guess that's how my brain connects. <laughs> so I was, and I was watching the, uh, the past video just to refresh myself, and I'm like, Lamont. I can't believe I called him Lamont. You're not the first. But I wanted to yeah. apologize to you on well, the I'm, Look, I'm here. We're glad Lamont is back. So what's going on, buddy? Nothing much, man. Good. I'm uh, a couple of years older, a couple of years wiser, and three beautiful boys. Good for you. And life is good. Yeah, no, I hear you, man. Can't complain. Can't complain, exactly. Another day above ground, right? Heck yeah, heck yeah. Now, a lot of people don't know, they, they do know you're originally from the Bronx. I'm you, originally from the Bronx, yes. Where you, you're, you're residing on the island now, right? Yeah, well, I'm in, I've been in the island for like 11, 12 years See, now. I didn't even know that. Yeah, man, I, I love been. Charlotte, man. Staten Island is the bomb. Everyone says you're far, far away. I'm like, good, that's where I want to be. <laughs> the demand for the freestyle concerts the last uh, 25 years has been overwhelming, especially yeah. now the last couple of years. Yeah. I know you have a lot of concerns and a lot of thoughts. You want to talk about the music business and clear the air. So uh, let's talk. Let's talk. What's let's going talk. on? Well, uh, a lot of things going on with, in, uh, with the concerts. Uh, the difference is now that, um, you know, back then, uh, a couple of years ago, we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have social media. And, uh, you know, everyone used to tell me, so what are you doing with yourself? What are you doing? And I'm like, I'm... I'm performing, I'm traveling, I'm, I'm working, I'm recording. Hey, I mean, we don't see you. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, it's still there. And then Facebook came out and Instagram and all those social apps. And, and everyone's like, oh, I didn't know that you were. No, nah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's been happening. It's been happening. But uh, so, uh, yeah, a lot of that stuff. And you get the good with the bad with the, yeah, with, with the social it's media. It's a nigga and a Yeah, you're not going to get away with it. You know, everyone has uh, an opinion. So, uh, uh, so that's segueing into that. That's where I kind of wanted to talk about a lot of the stuff that's going on behind the scene with the, in the freestyle industry right now. It's, it's, getting, it's getting to a point where um, you got some people, um, there's been a couple of incidents where some of the artists have been attacked and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, getting, it's getting a little scary. Well, I know you, I know you and a lot of the guys, but you know, you're one, you're one out of like a, a small group of them. Mm -hmm. You have a big following. Yes. You had the Billboard charting hits. Mm -hmm. And now you guys are coming back strong and it works out good. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're all on the bill together. Yeah, we it's are. It's like one big strong we concert, are. and we are. Uh, like a lot, a lot of people don't really know. They think everybody knows each other. We, we know really each don't... other for that. Yeah, for that yeah. moment. We, yeah. Uh, you know, it's like you know, you're passing by your neighbor, and you got to say hi to the neighbor, and just keep going. Yeah. in. It's one of those things. Hello and goodbye. But you know, we have a lot of respect for each other. There's a there's a nice close knit group of a few of us from the East Coast yep. and the West Coast that uh, you know we hang out, we we go drinking and. Mm -hmm. We go to each other's family functions, you know, and uh, you know we, we've been doing it since we were in our in our teens, man. Yeah, man. So, you know, I mean, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. We were getting jerked here, left and right. But who cares? We wanted to be rock stars. We, I we, remember we wanted, those days. We wanted to have fun, and 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 we did have a lot of fun. And you know, now it's now it's it's coming full circle. And you know, like I said, you know, because of social media, yeah, I get to speak to my fans one on one basis. I hit them up, whether it's Instagram, Facebook. You know, mm -hmm. back then we have to write a letter. I used to have to go to the office in Park Avenue. Yeah. Go upstairs. They had a big duffel bag with letters, and I would, I have to make them short because we had to seal them up, put them back in, mail them out. So that was something we did every month. You but remember now the flyers? You used to go out the flyers and the big uh, billboards yeah, and all that man. stuff. Yeah, I remember. I used to have to walk with one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, uh, things things nowadays are a lot easier. Music is way different. You know, we uh, we used to play records and cassettes and mm -hmm. all that stuff and CDs. Now all that's obsolete. I got all that stuff in my I house. I know, you though. told me, you told me. He tells me, uh, yeah, he, you got my CD. He gave me a CD of his band years ago. It was actually pretty good. And I still have it in my truck. And I was like, yeah, but who plays CDs? He goes, I do. Yeah, listen, <laughs> you know what it is? I love the CDs because you could just pull out any album instead of going crazy. I don't know, that's just yeah, me. But now they're selling vinyl now for like 50 bucks. Yep, <laughs> you know? 35 and, and higher. And I keep all that stuff for nostalgia reasons because it so takes you back. So do then I. Then you show these little kids, they, they're like, what? My son doesn't has no clue what that is. They don't even, even give a crap. They see, they see my rack, they're like, what is that? You know, they, you know, I go, it's called like a refrigerator. But like they exactly. see all the stuff, they don't know what to do. But it's, they want to push uh, a button. Yeah, I mean, look, it doesn't. It, there's nothing better than getting yourself a nice double-sided album when you can open it up and actually read who created the I music, love all that stuff. Who, who's the drummer, who's the keyboard player, who's the bassist, who's the vocalist, you they know, give all that me stuff. a poster with it. Yeah, exactly, you exactly, remember? the fold-out. The liner notes. <laughs> 
you know, so now listen, let me ask you. I know a lot of with, with, with the Wooly shows now, everybody thinks they know everybody and everybody wants to know everybody. So it's like, and I know they have the special packages of fans come backstage and yes. uh, this and that. In your opinion, how does that work? I mean, what fans should be back there? And the ones that get back there, how do they stay back there? Well, and the, the, I know they cause a ra a havoc sometimes. Now, some do. Uh, you got you got some promoters who are real professional that we union, and you got a lot of promoters that don't. Um, the way it works is uh, you can either get your, your average basic seating or you can pay a couple of hundred bucks mm -hmm. and get VIP seating and you get to go backstage and you get to hang out with yeah. the artists, take pictures, you know, maybe some photos and stuff yeah, like yeah. that and we sign some stuff and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But there's a lot of times when um, the promoters don't tell a lot of the artists what's going to happen and it's not in the contract and they're selling all these tickets for a lot of money uh, you know we, the artist doesn't get none of that you know this, this is all going to the promoter's pocket yes yeah, now this is some promoters, not all of them just some promoters yeah. you know so you know we got a little hip you know so now we make sure that it's you know in the contract and stuff like that that's a big side business and, I, and, and a lot of huge, the rock, the rock, yeah the rock band started but they get like like say like kiss uh they get a lot of money for the backstage for Guns N' Roses. It's like you saw oh, it's yeah. like twelve hundred dollars. Oh yeah, like I mean nah, that, that's not that, we're not talking about this kind of money. No, time. I know that. Yeah, but uh, I know. Yeah, but I, I know it's pretty up there with uh, like Billy Joe's and uh, yeah. and all that stuff. So I it's believe like crazy. It but, is. But, but people, you know, people want to do it. You know, if you're a fan of a certain type of music, I mean, I'd pay to go see. You know. Of a Billy Joe backstage, yeah. You know, I'll pay you know a couple of hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, whatever it is, just to get a couple of seconds with him. And you know? put it this way: people think it's easy no. for the artist. No, it, 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 it depends. It, it depends if they like it. But still, you're going to do a concert, then a meet and greet afterwards. You know, yeah, it's yeah. hard. I mean, you're, you're, well, you know. with us, it's different because we literally come on stage and, and we you, do it right there. So we're like sweating like pigs, and we smell. We don't smell. We don't smell good. And, you know, we, we just, <laughs> people want to talk to us and they want to tell us, you remember, you remember me from like 25 years ago. And I'm like, I don't know what I did last night. <laughs> I know, tell me about it. We're, you know, we're up there, Johnny. We got, you know, like you see the white hairs coming out and everything now. Everything hey, listen, gonna... our, our, we're not going to even say our age is 20 years younger than our parents. Like, so when our parents say we're 30, they look like they were almost 50. Isn't it funny? I was just talking about no, something. True. You're absolutely right. It's not right. against them. No, it's exactly. That's just the way you see the pictures. And when your uncle was 25 <laughs> years old, you look at the picture, he looks like he's 55 years yeah. old. Yeah. You know? It's like, you know what it is? We learned as freestyle. I, I listened to disco growing up. I listened to hip hop, disco, you know, salsa and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, I used to see the disco acts. And mm -hmm. as much as I loved them, you know, a lot of them were, were pretty messed up. A lot of them were doing drugs, heroin. Yeah. So, you know, we learned from our predecessors. We knew, you know, maybe I might not take that stuff and put it in my veins. You know, it's just not going to work out that right. So, you know, a lot of the freestyle acts uh, and, and 90s acts or 80s mm -hmm. acts, they're taking care of themselves. They actually look pretty good. Some of them look pretty decent. Yeah, well, you, if, if you notice, the, the bands from the 70s, some reason, they were the only ones that really survived that whole drug epidemic. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, because, yeah. come on, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at the Stones. They're the longest living band. It was 54 years about now. Yeah. And they're like dinosaurs, but they sound great. They sound You amazing. can't take it away from them. Yeah. But listen, God they're bless them for being out, out exactly. there. Exactly. Good for them. They're still rocking it out. I mean, they should be dead with all the <laughs> stuff they did. I didn't want to say it. I was waiting for you to say so it. They had their old doctors. They used to give them blood transfusions on tour. They had the best doctors coming in, That's you know. so crazy, man. You got to read the books. Mick, ja uh, Mick Jagger's and Keith Richards' book is really good. That dude. Yeah, he's scary. And he's just so happy, like, because he's, you know, he does. He's just but you like, can't hear what word he's saying. You know what I mean? That's not, I don't no, wanna... no, it's cool. Yeah. Keith, he's like, you know what he's saying sometimes, but he's an amazing uh, uh, guitarist. Man. Now, he's listen, good. what about these groups that come out out of nowhere because they just want to jump out on the bandwagon? Well, let me they clear the answer. So, so this is what happened. Yeah. A couple of years ago, you know, there was a lot of, there was a big, uh, uh, like I said, there was a big surge with freestyle. Everybody wanted to be a freestyle. Like, uh, the, 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 the record companies wanted to make all this money because because it was just, people were just buying it. They couldn't get enough of it. Yeah. So, you know, we were all young. We didn't know what we were doing. And uh, so fast forward, you know, after 93, 94, when hip hop came in and MTV came in, no more freestyle on the radio. You know, uh, it was a few, maybe a handful of stations. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the groups, a lot of the members who were groups, female groups, recording artists, they said, sure. forget this. I'm getting a real job. I'm going to get a real job. I, you know, the music, so they left. Then you had a few who stood, and like myself, and we, you know, we punched it out. 
We, we, we did shows where no one showed up, yeah. where it was embarrassing to say freestyle. We, we didn't want to say that, you know, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, we were trying to keep our morale up, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, did, we had a good five years, tough five years, where there was nothing. We had to bring down our price. Nobody cared about it. You know, everything yeah. was all about hip hop and, and all these rap groups. That whole hip hop rap. Yeah, that whole thing just took East, over. West just Coast a, Yeah, took all over. that. Yeah. And, about you know, and, you know, and then what happened is, it started making a surge. It, they, the promoters just started putting more groups together, and they started making these nostalgia type of concerts. And people were coming. That was they the were, best move. They couldn't get enough. And all of a sudden, we were back on top again. Yeah. And we were, you know, uh, doing Madison Square Garden radio, selling out Radio City yep. News Call two, two days in a row. East Coast, West Coast. Just these concerts were just everywhere. And all of a sudden, here comes these guys who left. And they wanted to regain Jump a lot back of on stuff. The wagon. Yeah. And a lot of female groups too. And uh, solo artists as well. You know, but a lot of the guys trademarked their name uh, as certain artists and they stood and uh, so that's where that whole legal situation was going on. So there's a lot of legal mumbo jumbo with a lot of groups and and uh, solo artists going on right now. I look at it like this. I mean if you could ha if you could if you could uh, get up there and do your thing, go for it. But if you can't, it's embarrassing. Especially when you love what you do. I mean, I can't wait till I get on stage. I might complain here and there, but once I'm on stage, I don't know about anyone else, but to me, it's just like, it's like, I like, I don't even, uh, I don't have a script. I love to improvise, I love to improvise mm -hmm. on stage, whether it's with a band or by myself, because you get that energy from the crowd. I mean, I mean, I don't know how you is when you're on your show. I know you just, and I saw you doing a couple of things. It's here, different just, when you're here than yeah. when you're performing. Like when I played the, when I used to play the drums, it was great. You right. know, it's a whole well, different you're the game. backbone, man. You're, every part of your body's moving, so you gotta. You were the one that kept the, the, the timing right. I mean, that was a know? lot of fun because you just you you you, just, you know what you gotta do. You just play and you play right. 10, 20 songs, and then you're done. This is a little different. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah, it is. It is. But you you know, you it, gotta you gotta get everything ready, prepared up here. It's you know, a different because, vibe. Yeah, it's a different vibe. But you do feed. Yeah. Just a, it's the same energy. You so, so I get on stage and uh, it could be a, a messed up PA system. It could be. A microphone that doesn't have a battery in it, so now I gotta go old school with the coil. Yeah. It could be whatever. It could be a heckler in the crowd, and you know, I just you just live in the moment and have fun. I think that's the best way to do it. And I love I love my job. Nah, man. Listen, last time I saw you guys, you and Suave, when you did that whole thing at the St. George Theater over the yes. summer. Yes, yes, yes. And I brought fun. my brother back. It's, my, it's just funny because my brother, he's a nine to five guy, good guy, family guy, but like he always like you know, comes to the shows every now and then. We're tight. But like once I said, you know, because he loves freestyle. Yeah, he told yeah, me he told me, me, get yeah, the freestyle. Right. So I go, I go, come, come, and I get you backstage. You come hang out with us. So he had to come and see what's going on. He had the best time that night. He was yeah, I remember. He was dancing. He was dancing, showing all his friends. St. George Theater is the only theater that I will get off stage and walk around. The people, yeah. they embrace it. They're having such a good time. Besides all my friends that go, so. Um, I love doing it there. I think we're doing it this year as well. We're, we're going to be there again. Now let me ask you, who started, who was the first guy that started this whole rally of bringing these all back together? Well, from where I can remember, the first guy that, that, that started was Salabatello. I was, uh, Sal's a gentleman. I had him here. Salabatello, yes you did. Salabatello was the one that said, hey, maybe instead of doing one act here and one act there, why don't we just get like a whole bunch of acts, put them together and see what happens. So he chose the Copacabana, uh, not the original Copacabana, yeah. you know, uh, the new Copacabana. Uh, which was on 50, what was Copacabana at the, the original? 20 something, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, and sold out. Sold out, and uh, they couldn't let any more people in, and it was crazy, and uh, and that's what all started a couple of years back, man. So it was a lot of fun. Great. Well, good luck with that. Now, Thank before, you. it's, it's uh, almost about to wrap up, but let's yeah. talk about, on, 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 a, on a good note, your new music, I know you're remastering a lot of songs yes. on iTunes and, yes, and, yes. and Spotify. Yeah, a lot of people, Talk yeah. To me. Yeah, a lot of people now with the, uh, with the, with the streaming music, you know, you could uh, have people follow you on, on, on Spotify and all that stuff. So I have uh, like 35,000 people following me on Spotify. So they want to hear your music. Yeah. So, you know, you just start recording stuff. They couldn't find a lot of the original stuff. They couldn't find What Does That Leave Love. So I got What Does That Leave Love 2.0 mm -hmm. that I reproduced and re-sang again. Okay. I could only re-sing a couple of songs. I'm not 21 years old anymore, you know? Who has so, all the masters to all this stuff? Columbia Records. Okay, could you Columbia. still get, are you able to like touch them and all? You do so, anything with them? No, I, can't, I have to actually reproduce it again. Re-remaster 
it again. So I have to re-go in there. You know, I have to re-record it. I got to sound like I was, you know, younger back then. And some of the songs are good. Battle of the Heart, that one I can't touch. I yeah. mean, I was just a baby. So yeah, that was great. Yeah, I can't do that one. But I'm doing uh, my Spanish stuff. Ya lo sé que tú te vas. That's another one that's not on iTunes. No one can find it. Right, so I'm cool. going to remaster that. And uh, I'm actually coming out with this really cool remake. I'm a huge Eric Clapton fan. Yeah, and when you told me that the other day, I was surprised. Yeah, I love Eric Clapton um, and John Mayer. So, and ja I'm a big jazz fanatic. So, I actually just finished doing the vocals today on this thing. It's called Old Love. Mm -hmm. So, uh, maybe I'll come back and do it over. I there. was going to say you have to come back. Yeah, and I would perform. love to do it, man. It would be kind of cool. I had announced that you weren't going to perform because people would have bought bow and arrows. <laughs> <and been like. laughs> yeah, yeah, we did it. Uh, we did it two years ago, right? Two years ago. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of great. I had a great time there. But uh, yeah, that stuff and uh, just the, the touring, and uh, and the daddy job. You know, just uh, yeah. enjoying life. Well, good luck. Well, you know, this is my last season of late night. Start my new production in uh, sometime in 2018. But when that happens, you're gonna be. You guys are gonna be on the top of my list to come back on your new stuff. You come. We, we come out with a bang. We're going into the next decade with Let's do it. with Johnny P. So HD. All right, where can people find you <laughs> on social media? Uh, the Real George Lamont on Instagram, um, George Lamont on Facebook, and uh, uh, George Lamont on Twitter. Beautiful, George. Thank you so much. George Lamont, everybody. Thank you. Oh, man. Thank you so much. Have a seat for a second. All right. George Lamont, a man's man.